So in the previous session, if you remember, we were able to make post request to the products endpoint and we were able to add a product to our product slides. Okay, so when I do get here, I list all the products. And if I add another one, let's say speakers with post, it gives me the response. But there's, a, there's one more thing that we need to do, and that is validation. So we are assuming that uh, the user will actually always send us the product name. And uh, they'll always send us something that fits in a product name. They won't like uh, copy a newspaper article here and send us, right? We, we, we make those assumptions and uh, those assumptions are not correct because you should not be trusting what the client sends you and that's why you should be doing all kinds of validation. So validations would include the minimum length of the product name, the maximum length and let's say if you have an email ID then uh, it should have the email format, if it's a website it should have a website format. Uh, if uh, you got multiple fields here, then one of those fields would depend would be dependent on this field being present conditionally, and things like that would need to be validated, right? So in this session, we are going to understand how we can implement those kind of validations. Okay. So uh, first of all, to do that, uh, let's get back to VS Code. First of all, to do that, we will have to install a go package that is called validator okay so to install that package you have to execute this command that is go get go package dot in go slash playground validator dot v9 just execute the command as is and you'll have your go validator installed here i've got a v8 as well and v9 as well if you want to maintain the consistency with, I'm, with, with what I'm showing you here in the session, make sure that you install the v9 session. I think there are some differences between uh, both of these versions. So how do we use, how do we make use of this? Well, before we do that, let's just start using this validator. So I already made some changes into the main.go file here. So I imported the validator function here, validator package. And uh, then I initialize a variable called v and I initialize it with this value validator.new which actually returns validate. Now what is validate? So validate is kind of a struct and uh, that's pretty much the extent of the things that you need to know about it. Let's just not dig into what it's doing but it's just that you get a struct here. Okay. And this V will then help you validate the structs that you have. For example, the request body here. Okay. Now, uh, keep in mind that I would define this uh, validator right outside any of the handlers inside the main method, but outside any of the handlers so that I can make use of that in any of the handlers here. And I know that our code is kind of getting messy. We, we are writing everything in the main.go file. We are not even venturing out to writing any different files. And we'll, we'll get there. We will have a session to clean up all this mess. Uh, but for now, we are just trying to understand some of the basic concepts. Okay, once those are, uh, you know, once those are clear, then we can actually do all kinds of cleaning that we need. And in fact, we do need to do some cleaning. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually extend the tagging that I had here. Okay, so for the name field, we had the tagging that was for JSON. And it said that when this struct is converted to JSON, it's gonna assume the field will be mapped to the JSON field called product underscore name. You can extend this tag to include another uh, tag here, and we'll call it validate tag. And validated tag would be written like this. Okay, so validated colon and then uh, inside double quote, just like what you did here, you will have your conditions mentioned. So here I have the condition called required, and then there's something called min is equal to four. 
which is supposed to so require is supposed to say or imply that this name field is required or product underscore name field in the JSON payload and it's not an optional field it has to be supplied okay because we don't want a product list that has an ID but doesn't have a name right and this mean is equal to 4 implies that the product name has to have the minimum length of 4. Okay. Now, uh, having the tags as is, is, is not actually doing anything. You have to have some kind of code that will actually work on this uh, uh, tags. Okay. So, usually all this, uh, all this code, uh, all this logic actually uses reflect package to fetch the tags associated with each struct field and then uh, validates them or implements their logic so for example for json we, we did not implement any logic because this uh, eco package itself inside the context it's doing all the json validation we need we don't have to do anything okay but right now we have this validator package and we are going to implement some of our uh, validations here so uh, what we have done here right now so when we get the request body populated using the bind method okay after that we are going to validate the request body actually does have the values the kind of values that we expect okay so what we are going to do is uh, we have the v variable initialized before and we are going to call this a function struct and we are going to pass request body to it okay and it's going to return an error so if there's any exceptions in the error then it's going to return that error and it's going to respond with uh, internal server error on the console on the browser all right when the client makes the request it is important to keep in mind that this validation has to be done once the request body has been populated there's no point of doing this before you do the bind operation because at that point uh, most likely your request body would be always invalid because it hasn't even gotten it hasn't even got populated with the values yet right so that's one thing and uh, so now let's uh, let's get started okay so I'm going to run this and I already had this validation here and let's see what happens so I'm going to run this and uh, this time if I add speaker it works okay but let's see if I try to add something that's name is less than three or four characters let's say I don't know I, I, I think headset something like this okay and when I try to add it it fails with 500 internal source error so this is the kind of validation that we can add to this code and eco framework will automatically handle the errors for us and the response codes for them okay and uh, now we let's spend some time understanding how this validator works okay so I have some other validators here some other fields for this uh, struct now these fields don't have equivalent uh, representation in our product slice but just for the sake of learning this validator uh, we are going to actually pass a request body that has these fields and we are going to see how it works out all right so for example we have a vendor field and it's JSON equivalent is vendor and this expects uh, the minimum length of the vendor name should be 5 maximum should be 10 then you got an email and for email your validate function expects it that it is required with vendor so for example if the vendor has some value supplied then uh, if you supply the value for vendor you have to supply the value for email as well and it is of type email so it is going to check for the email format for this particular field then you go to website and website for, for, for website the validate uh, uh, actually validate function actually validates that it is 
of type URL as in it has to look like a URL for example HTTP colon slash slash apple.com or something okay then country in country we are expecting just a country code a two digit a two character country code okay and let's say the default device IP and here we are expecting it to be of type IP now these are some of the things that you will have to learn okay so you can go to this package that we install uh, this validator package you can go to the go to its documentation and you can you'll have to learn these things because for most of the part even the IntelliSense in uh, VS Code or any other tool won't be able to help you with uh, auto filling many of these things it, it won't be able to suggest you uh, what fields you want with this so you would have to kind of spend some time you know getting used to this for example uh, when you have when you have multiple validations into a single field it is important what order they are in so in this case I want to check for minimum first and then maximum okay so uh, the order is also important at the same time uh, uh, <clears throat> you want to make sure that there are other things that you check in the documentation for example if you want a regex expression to be matched if you want uh, this value to be equal to another field in the same struct there are many things that you can do with this kind of validation we are here just focusing on some of the basic ones that we will encounter many times in uh, in, in writing applications like this okay so let's now have, we have written this let's check it out in the application okay so what we'll do we'll go back to insomnia and I have some sample code here okay so when I send when I click send here and make a post request it works right because all these fields are correct there's nothing wrong with them okay but let's say if I reduce this to Apple then it's going to fail because the minimum length expected is 5 and this is supposed to be of type email so if I remove this and then make the send request it's going to fail again okay but if I restore it it succeeds right and if I um, if I remove this vendor field okay if I remove this email field entirely if I send the request then it's going to complain because if the vendor is present the email has to be present as well okay the website for example if I just give it apple.com let's see what happens it's going to fail again okay and the country if uh, if country is USA it is going to fail but let me change it back to US and it succeeds and the same way the device IP so let's say I'm going to give a value more than 255 let's say 650 675 and it's going to fail but it's showing it back to 8 succeeds okay so this was just a small tutorial on how the validator function works and there is a peculiar way that we can use validator here with echo and that's what we are going to learn in the next session it's going to be a very small session nothing much to it but the important point is now you understand how validator function works and it is also important to validate all kinds of fields okay so I'm going to remove this other fields that I had added here okay and we are going to uh, we are going to continue after this uh, uh, you know implementing the put and delete methods afterwards okay so that was all for this session and I'll see you in the next session thank you